everybody just wanted to take a few minutes here to show you how to do a store logics software upgrade as you can see here I have a working store logics 4.1 system and we can verify it's working through my keypads here there we go okay so first thing we're gonna need to do uh, is you're going to want to contact PTI to actually get an upgrade to version 5 of StoreLogix. Uh, this is a paid upgrade from version 4.1 and you're going to want to contact our sales department at the phone numbers listed in the description or on our website at PTISecurity.com. Once you have your upgrade, go ahead and close down all of the StoreLogix applications. So we'll go ahead and close StoreLogix. Make sure we close the StoreLogix interface if you have it open. And most importantly, make sure you close Logic Server. And then we'll go ahead and put the StoreLogix disk into the drive. And we'll run the setup. And in this case, because we're going from 4.1 to version 5, it's going to want to upgrade our uh, SQL server that has our database. So we'll go ahead and click on install. So the first thing the StoreLogix installer is going to ask you for is how to set up your database. Now, obviously, we're doing an upgrade here. So we already have a StoreLogix system installed and working that has a working database. Um, if we're doing the upgrade on the server, then we want to go ahead and choose the this is my primary computer store logics will be here if you happen to have a networked installation you're going to want to upgrade the server first and then go ahead and install the software onto your workstations and if you're doing this on a workstation you would choose this is one of my workstations store logics is hosted on another computer for this scenario we're just going to go ahead and choose this is my primary computer yes and then this is going to go ahead and do the, the StoreLogix SQL upgrade. So at this point, we'll just go ahead and speed through this, and I'll join back up with you when we get to the actual StoreLogix installer. All right. So for the StoreLogix installer, for the most part, this is going to be a pretty straightforward process of just clicking next through this installer. We'll go ahead and accept the license agreement. Click next. We'll do a complete install because that's what we did for our 4.1. And we'll go ahead and click on install. If you had a custom install, you would have clicked custom back in the last step uh, and just verified that the components that you wanted to install were still the ones that it was going to install. It should automatically pick up on that if you've done a custom install in the past. Custom installs are really important if you're doing a workstation installation because generally for those you just want store logics uh, and possibly the management interface but you don't want logic server and the sync services. Now that that's complete we'll go ahead and click finish and then we'll open up StoreLogix. And we'll go ahead and log in using our existing credentials from 4.1. This is going to go ahead and do some database updates uh, for changes to the system that are in StoreLogix 5. This process will probably take a few minutes. If the database updates do st stop where they seem like they're taking a long time at a particular point here, uh, just wait for it to finish. Some of these may take a little bit of time. The StoreLogix 5.0 upgrade, because it's a paid upgrade, you're going to get a serial number with the new software. It should be on the back of your DVD case that you received. At this point, you could go ahead and click register and put in your serial number, name, and company information. And then once you've registered, you can come log, go ahead and continue on into the software.
as you can see it went ahead and launched my interface software and I'm going to go ahead and verify that my interface is still configured correctly and it is so I'm going to go ahead and click cancel here and this window I can go ahead and close it doesn't affect the service running in the background uh, and now with StoreLogix 5, one of the first things it's going to do here is ask you about your facility description because in StoreLogix 5, one of the new features is that it can set the facility description on your Apex and 700LC keypads automatically. So what's showing me here is my current description is Storage Facility A, which is the name of my facility that I'm using here. It's going to ask me would I like to change the setting now. If I click yes, it's going to give me the option to enter a new description. So if, let's say if I just want to call it storage facility and click OK, then that's what will show on the keypads. At any point down the road, if you want to change that setting, you can come back to set up Falcon XT, edit your XT, and then this description here is what will be shown on your Apex and 700 LC keypads. If you have two line keypads like a VP uh, or Digitech keypads that don't have displays then this setting really doesn't affect you at all. And now, so now we can see that the Logic Server is going to be a little different in version 5 than it was in 4. Uh, it's now going to run inside a dashboard because in version 5 the logic server is a service rather than an application. So that's what this means is that when your computer reboots, uh, logic server will automatically reconnect to the Falcon XT without you having to log into the computer or do anything. So that way logic server is connected uh, as much as possible to the Falcon XT. And it would also normally when you're doing a 4.1 upgrade it would start a a firmware update at this point where it would be updating from 625. My XT already had 718, so that's why it didn't do the firmware update. Uh, and now we can see that we've done an upgrade. We can see that our license was reset because of the upgrade. And so we'll go ahead and try another code at our keypad here. And you can see that the code was entered correctly and that the system worked. If you have any questions about doing a StoreLogix version 5 upgrade from either 4.1 or 3.1 or older, uh, and this video didn't quite get you there or you ran into some issue that you're not sure what to do about, uh, please feel free to open a support ticket at support.pticsecurity.com. And hopefully this was informative and got you through the process. Thanks.